Hi, here are the eight slides I missed out at my presentation in Thomas More University. Um, I'll work through them briefly for you here. One of the key questions I asked the students was on the difference between the word stigma and stereotype. Stigma is literally a mark or a sign, often of a spoiled or discredited identity, according to Goffman. And um, a stereotype means two or more of something. If we had had time, it would have been good to have worked through this to explore how stigmas and stereotypes can impact on clients, either from societies or even in the healthcare services that they access. There are lots of important words that we often use in our language, but maybe we don't take the time to stop and think what they actually mean or where they come from and the impact that they can have. Look how many of these words of discrimination that we may use are actually related to fears. So some of the words ending in phobia and the others are to do with active hatred towards other people. Some of the terms and concepts of discrimination used within genders and sexuality studies actually refer to one group of people having power over others. So sexism, heterosexism, heterosupremacy are one group over another. The other words ending in phobia often relate to an irrational fear, but many of us would argue it's not so much fear as active discrimination or hatred of others. Of course, whether we're talking about stigma, discrimination, people's negative attitudes or taboos and prejudices, they can all re um, be revealed in different ways. So sometimes they're internalized within individuals or between individuals. They may be hidden or out in the open and also form parts of our cultures or the institutions within such cultures. If we had had time during the session to do some group work, then based on all that we'd studied so far, I would have asked the, the students present to study this for a little while, asking what difference can they make? What goodness can they do? So after looking at ways in which we've explored stigmas and discriminations and the invisibilized aspects of sexual health and well-being, how might they do something better in the services in which they're working? And looking at the beneficence or the goodness each person can do, it's also worth exploring some of the barriers against that. So which are the aspects of sexual health and well-being that our services may routinely ignore? And why do you think that is? But also looking at ourselves and exploring whether we think there are certain things or aspects we would find difficulty in dealing with and how do we think uh, we can overcome that. And one of the ways we might explore making positive changes is to do a force field analysis. So write the aim in the centre of the page. What is it we want to do? So here to improve practice regarding difficult issues in sexual health. Look at the things that will hinder us, the restraining forces, but try to get more facilitating forces, the things to make the positive impact on our client's well-being. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to this presentation. I wish you well and hope that you can go and change the world, make it a better place in relation to genders and sexual health.